call your wife crazy, and then ask her to watch the Golden Globes with you. I'm gonna watch the Globes. You coming? Bruh. Because we have the final episode of Delicate Part 1, and oh boy, there's a lot to talk about. What is Anna coughing up? Who is Dex's dad? And why is my local grocery store out of Ben and Jerry's? I should mention that as of the writing of this video, we don't have a release date for Part 2. With the actor strike still going on, we're probably looking at 2024. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. I've left timestamps below so you can see all the topics I'll be covering. Oh, and like and subscribe, I do plan on covering Part 2 whenever it comes out in the next decade. Well, I didn't have Karl Lagerfeld and Yves Saint Laurent on my AHS bingo card this week. These famous designers have taken a young Miss Preacher under their wing in 1987 Manhattan. And my god, these nurses need to learn some bedside manner. You're having a f***ing baby, of course it hurts. Miss Preacher will later tell Virginia that this baby's father was a one-night stand from a sailor during Fleet Week, while she'll tell Carl and Eve that the father is, quote, stuck in traffic. Regardless of who the father is, Dr. Hill here says that Miss Preacher cannot renege on her deal, implying that she, like Queen Mary before her, made a deal with these raven women in exchange for her child. Miss Preacher would become a famous designer, selling her bag to Marc Jacobs and making millions. I also think it's very weird Dr. Hill hasn't aged here, at least not much. He should be 36 years younger, putting him in his late 20s, and he definitely doesn't look it. Was this simply a production choice that the writers thought they could get away with, or does Dr. Hill have some form of longevity? Nothing's off the table when you're working with the supernatural. Now, Preacher ends up having this baby. All we really know is that it's a male from Dr. Hill exclaiming, quote, he's crowning. We don't even get to see if it has those claw-like talons like Queen Mary's baby. Nor do we find out the fate of this child. With Miss Preacher and Virginia teaming up, it makes me believe there's more of a connection between these two than meets the eye. Perhaps Preacher is Dex's real mother. It might explain why Preacher is so adamant about Dex's safety. I'm telling you this because of your son. Your son is in great danger. And the very fact we have Virginia saying this... Some men won't even stand up for the woman who birthed just makes me question she might not be the mother. We still don't know who Dex's dad is. Virginia wants Dex to testify in her assault case against him, claiming that his father performed satanic rituals that clouded her memory. It was only when she saw a psychotherapist that these memories came back to her. My best guess at the moment is Dr. Hill is Dex's father, but Dex, like his mother, has had his memory wiped. We know that his father must have been very affluent, paying for Dex's schooling and an expensive condo in the City. Dr. Hill has his own clinic and could probably afford this. In episode one, Dr. Hill pays more attention to Dex than to Anna, his patient, and only when Dex gives him a glare this episode does he further assess Anna and her pain. Miss Preacher also regularly stops by the clinic. Cora said she's just a crazy woman who stops by all the time to hand out conspiracy flyers, but what if she's here to see Dr. Hill? What more of their story are we missing? After seeing her lawyer, Virginia experiences this haunting. It's as if the sights and sounds of the city drown out around her. Part of it looks like nighttime. Pedestrians disappear and she's haunted by images of a barking German shepherd, black goats like those found on the beach, and four of these raven women. It looks as though she's seen these women before. This is the first time we've seen more than the two of them on screen, suggesting there are multiples of them out there working for some greater purpose. We know two of them are the Ashleys. Siobhan is probably their leader, but the final two are a mystery. Maybe it's Nicolette and Sonia. Remember, two ravens took Anna. Nicolette basically lives in the house, and we learn this episode that Sonia is only 15 minutes away. Siobhan has really dialed up the bitch this episode, being almost as cold as a Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Without telling Anna, she's taken on Babette Eno as a client. This girl seriously licked Anna's pastry and put it back. Bitch. But why is Siobhan so damn pissed? Anna thinks it's because she got pregnant and is jealous, but honestly, I'm not sure I buy that since Siobhan has been nothing but supportive throughout Anna's IVF treatment. She's so nice, she even gives her more of that sweet vitamin B12, those vials she gave Anna in episode two. And you know when they put in music like this, it can't be good. 
Siobhan taking on Babette as a client is most likely a setup to ensure Anna does what it takes to get that Oscar. The evidence so far points at Siobhan being either one of the Ravens or its leader. She tends to wear all black, hires the Ashleys, who were present as Ravens with Queen Mary, and asks Anna if she wants a baby as much as she does an Oscar. Anna, Mary, and Preacher have all been given something in exchange for their babies. Mary, a fruitful reign, Preacher, success in fashion, and Anna, success in acting. Siobhan also continues her romp with Hamish, but to be honest, I don't quite know what she's getting out of it. We find out it was Siobhan who gave Hamish the script for the auteur and told him to put his name on it. Even after Hamish's agents told him that the film would go nowhere, especially with Anna in the lead, it defied all odds and now has 11 Golden Globe noms. It seems Siobhan is orchestrating all of this, and Hamish demands to know what's going on. What the fuck is going on, Siobhan? And who the hell are you? Not getting a huge part this episode is Kamal, who we learn has a wife of five years. I don't know about you, but I felt this was like an odd piece of information. We learn a bit more about Nicolette, however, when Sonia arrives. Anna notes how odd Nicolette looked at her, almost as if she had seen her before. Remember that Nicolette is Talia's house manager, so it's easy to assume that Nicolette would have known Talia's best friend, Adeline. So when she saw Sonia, who is this spitting image of Adeline, it may have triggered something in her, even though Nicolette says she's never met an Adeline. Anna still hasn't gotten rid of that picture of Adeline and Dex. Last episode, we saw how Adeline morphed into Sonia Shawcross, perhaps a manifestation of Anna's paranoia that her husband is cheating. Speaking of cheating, Sonia tells Anna that she's staying just 15 minutes away at a nearby hotel. This totally isn't helping with those cheating thoughts. And who else lives close by? Dex's mom. There's a lot of coincidences here. In this episode, we have a new addition to the photo. I Ivy. We've seen how Ivy wants to make sure that Anna does not have her child. Could Ivy have had something to do with Adeline's death? All we really know is that Adeline died in a tragic kitchen fire at a restaurant where all the staff were female. And who the hell keeps filling the fridge with ice cream? That shit is gonna melt. In her conversation with Virginia, Preacher says that this evil group is out to get Anna and Dex as revenge for Adeline's defection. The implication here is that Adeline used to be one of the Ravens before falling in love with Dex. Maybe Adeline never died in that fire, but these ravens somehow took back control of her body. She says this really weird line about being the slightly more evil version of Adeline, which I thought was weird. Sonia also gives Anna a white owl plushie. A white owl was seen perched in the forest when Anna, Kamal, and Dex go searching for Miss Preacher. Maybe Sonia can shapeshift into this animal. Last episode, we saw a black cat make its way into the basement through the window. Is that how these ravens are getting in and out, with some sort of shape-shifting. The name Sonia means wisdom, and in many cultures, owls are a symbol of wisdom. And what about those green heels? Sonia says, Green heels you had on at the gallery? Oh god, I never wear green. Yet Anna saw her wear green shoes at her exhibition and outside her pop-up gallery. Is Sonia lying or Anna misremembering? Maybe Sonia is simultaneously Sonia and Adeline, switching between these two personalities. Virginia hires a famous lawyer, Luther Feldman, to help in her case. There's only one scene between these two, but honestly, it doesn't advance the plot or provide us with anything about this character. Perhaps the writers wanted us to have a look at him, as he may play a bigger role in episodes to come. There's no confirmation if he's related to Lark Feldman, the mysterious tattoo artist and dentist played by Billy Lord in season 10's double feature. While getting examined, Dr. Hill notes that the baby is growing exceptionally fast, thinking that Anna is in her third trimester instead of second. Could this demon baby be growing at a faster rate than normal? Anna's pimple continues to bother her and she starts losing her hair in the shower. Your body will always tell you when something's wrong. Isn't that the truth? Anna's spa day is interrupted by shower goats and you you know that's got to be an extra charge. Anna also finds those dolls with pieces of her hair missing. We still don't know who's been putting these here, but they seem to act like voodoo dolls. Can we also talk about how uncomfortable this scene with Cora was? It doesn't really move the plot along, but it certainly seems like a metaphor for consent, or the lack of it in Anna's case. I should also mention this fight between Dex and Anna, where Dex finally admits what we've known all this time, that he believes Anna is making 
all this stuff up. All Anna wants is for Dex to believe her, but he's not sure he can do that. So what do you do when your husband doesn't believe you? You camp out in your creepy basement where you've taken those Anna dolls and put them in the crib. Really not helping your argument that someone else is putting the dolls out there, Anna. It's also interesting to note that the raccoon is gone. Did she actually eat that raccoon last episode, or was that a figment of her imagination after getting knocked unconscious? Anna finds out that Babette wins Best Actress, and guess who calls immediately after? Siobhan. It's almost as if she knew this were going to happen, ready to ask Anna if she's willing to do whatever she says to get that Oscar. And Anna wants it just as much as a baby. Now what the hell does Anna cough up? In our first look, it appears to be tiny screws or nails with grooves around the edges. Kind of looks like it could be whatever was nailed in the Anna doll found on the beach. If this indeed is some sort of voodoo doll, then coughing up these nails or screws might be an answer. But this second shot doesn't look like a nail or screw. It's more smooth and claw-like. It looks too small to be a raccoon claw, and if it were to belong to her baby, who knows how it got into her stomach. Another new addition is this security camera, the same one installed by Kamal's company in Anna's home. I don't think Kamal is here for Anna's protection. He's here to keep tabs on her. But thank goodness the security camera's here because Anna appears to get chloroform. Judging by the gloves, this is either Dr. Hill or one of the Ravens. He, the nurses, and Ravens all wear the same type of gloves in the flashback segment. But take note of this orange handkerchief. Orange being the same color of Sonia's gift. Is Sonia one of the four Ravens, or is this just a coincidence? Considering nothing was seen in the security camera in episode 2 from the break-in, my guess is that nothing will be seen here either. Anna wakes up in a completely different top than the one she was knocked out in. This kind of put me on red alert thinking that Anna may have been involved in Babette's death, but considering this happened right after the Golden Globes, which occur in California, and she's all the way over here in the Hamptons, this isn't likely. I'm curious how Babette's death will strengthen Anna's chances at an Oscar. I'm assuming Babette would be nominated too, and usually a death only strengthens a nominee's chances at winning. Winning. Such was the case with Heath Ledger and Chadwick Boseman. Siobhan is ready to get started as part one comes to an end. But now I turn it over to you. With several more months until part two, what are your biggest thoughts and theories? I want to hear them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe. And for more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at BigStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.